Hi, I'm James Moore, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Tango TX1, and I'm going to be going over a specific error that we see uh, pretty regularly in the shop, and that's this SE1 or SE2 error. You're going to see this come up a lot. Uh, so this can mean a lot of different things, but I wanted to show you just one of the quick things you can check for before you send it into a repair shop. It might save you a little bit of money. Uh, essentially, what this means, so this unit broken down, they have two single CO sensors in here and then what happens is the monitor reads both of them to make sure that one's not firmly out of whack and so when you get this error it means that one's firmly out of whack uh, may, may mean a sensor's out may mean that it's just reading extremely differently uh, but essentially first steps to try and recalibrate your units but if that doesn't work and it still gives you this error uh, I want to show you a little trick that we can look at so first of all let's turn this off we're going to pop the screwdriver out so press and hold this button on the left And screen's off. I'm going to flip this over. So these are star screws in the back, and ISC actually has a screwdriver for them that you can get from them. That works perfectly, but any star will work. I'm not sure on the actual size, but I'm sure you can figure it out. Take these screws out here. I'm going to take a look. So one thing is when I'm pulling this up, this pulls straight out. Straight out. I want to show you guys how this looks. So you can see you've got my two sensors here. Uh, it looks like everything is okay, but I'm gonna pull. Just, come on, you. Well, if that doesn't want to come off, there's a trick to it. There it goes. Come on. You know, there we go. Get a go push down on it and then pull this out. But you don't have to do this when you're doing this. But I wanted to show you. You see how this sensor is just it's kind of like loosely in there. So there's a glued pad below here, and what happens is because this doesn't have deep prongs on there. Sometimes this can fall out of it. If maybe it wasn't put in correctly or if it's been jostled too much. Uh, sometimes it'll just get a little loose in there. So what you do is you just line it back up. Uh, just be careful when you're doing it. Make sure you get it in there good. And get it in nice and tight. Uh, and then when, you, then when you put it on here, you uh, let's first you can put it in the board here. Bottom first, then the top. And you just pop that in. It'll click like that. Uh, just make sure, see how these are down nice and straight right now? When you put this on, so I'll watch some people do it, and they'll, they'll kind of go at an angle, and they'll actually push this out as they're putting it in. See how like that, just it wasn't really much pressure at all, and it pops it right back out. Uh, so, all right, I did a no-no there. Uh, try not to touch this filter with your fingers. You want to keep these as clean as you can, but uh, at least away from the finger oils. Keep them good for longer. But So be very careful when you're putting that in. Additionally, it, so an older unit won't have one of these pieces, but ISC actually has a part here that you can get. You can buy them if you have an older unit that's out of warranty, uh, or if you have a new one, it probably has this in there, but this is meant to help stabilize the sensors. So if you've got one of those, make sure that goes in, in there like that. Um, and if you're having frequent problems and you don't have one of these, I recommend picking one up. It doesn't solve all the problems. This can still happen. It can still get pushed over this way, etc. but it does help keep them a little more stable. And you can just put them back together. And now we're going to uh, let's power this unit on, and then we'll put the screws in while it's powering up. And we'll see if that fixed the problem here. My bet said it will. Now, anytime you do this for your unplugging or plugging in sensors, I always recommend you recalibrate the unit. Uh, so we'll go about that for our next step. But you can watch the existing video on that if you want to check that out. Okay, this is still going through startup. Good. And don't over tighten these screws. You just want to get them in until they're snug. That's actually why I like this screwdriver. Uh, the round design makes it a lot harder to over press on these screws. It slips a lot easier than you can tell. Okay, good. And you can see now, now there's the checkbox here, and there's no error down in here. So this probably fixed the issue we were having. I'm going to put this back on the calibration dock and put it through a cal. But, uh, so that's my recommendation. Do you ever get an SE1 or SE2? I just know that you might want to check those sensors and uh, see if they get, they're slotted properly before you send it out and spend a few hundred bucks on having someone like me just you know pop it back in there and recalibrate it for you. Anyway, uh, any questions, anything along those lines, 
um, you can feel free to give us a call. Number here is 734-956-0539. And you can email us at support at idealcalibrations.com. Or just leave a comment on the video. We watch the comments and try and get back to you. Uh, so if the video helped you out, uh, I'd ask you to like the video, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the alert bell if you can. Um, but anyway, you guys have a great day and stay safe out there. Hope this helped out.